We are honoring the late Stuart Scott this weekend and is part of the entire Jimmy V week here at ESPN. And we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, Michael, that you and Stuart have a special, you know, shared a special story in that while you were on The Ultimate Fighter, unfortunately, that is when cancer became a really bigger issue in your life. And uh, we do want to share that story with those who may not know it. So let's take a look. It all started for our family. Um, right around my mom's birthday in 2011. She found out the day before, and I found out on her birthday, June 1st, 2011, um, my dad had cancer. And, you know, I'll never forget that feeling. It's like you're caught off guard by a sudden storm. The day is so bright, the day is sunny, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, this ominous dark cloud comes out of nowhere, and it just starts storming on you. And I remember right when my mom told me, and I got off the phone, I was getting ready to go on a run. And there was this really big hill by my house called Carnahan Hill, and I never tried to run it. I tried it once, and it never bid well for me. And I hung up the phone, and I just took off running. And I blacked out. And when I came to, I was sitting on my butt in the dirt, like hugging my knees, and I was at the top of that hill. I just knew by the tone of her voice that this was not a favorable case. In the fall of 2011, I find out about Ultimate Fighter Trials, and in that time, my dad's over in Seattle doing a 100-day treatment. I'm wanting to go over there and spend time with him, and he's just like, stay there, I'm fine. You don't need to come over here. You've got this big opportunity coming up. Like, you gotta stay the course, you need to stay over there. So I listen, you know, that's what I did. When my dad told me to do stuff, I listened, I listened to him. So then I, there's this one day, and I'll, this is another one of those days that, My sister called me, Maggie calls me, you need to get to the hospital, dad's in ICU. I walked up and I grabbed his hand, I was like, hey, it's me, I'm here. And the first thing he said to me before he said anything else, the very first thing he said to me was he says, no matter what happens today or going forward, you have to promise me, you will follow through with your dreams. Don't you even think about turning this down. Don't you even think about staying home. If they call you, you go. Next thing he says, Make sure you take care of the family. You're the man now. You gotta take care of your sisters. You gotta take care of your mom. You know, him and I had these talks where like, before I made it on the show, like, if you make it, I'm not gonna be here when you get home. And uh, I just remember telling him that I love him and I don't wanna go. There will never be a harder moment for me than having to hug my dad at the front door to our house and say goodbye before he was even gone. I left March 1st, and that first fight was March 9th. Stop! Love you, Dad. My mom told him that I won, and he just put his hands up and, and gave a thumbs up and a, did a slight smile, and within a day, he had passed. In that moment, I was like, I don't care what it takes. This all can't be for nothing. I love you too, Mom. There's no way you're gonna lose any of these fights, and you're not gonna give your mom another reason to cry. I don't think I was a favorite one fight in that entire season. I was never a favorite against the first pick, Justin Lawrence. What a performance turned in! Mom, that was for you. I was never a favorite against James Vick. I was over a two to one underdog against Ally Quinta. I was never favored to win this thing, but when the finals fall on your mom's birthday, what are you gonna do? When the finals fall on the day, the year to the day when you found out your dad had cancer, June 1st, 2011, I was running up that hill questioning my life and why is this happening to me. And a year later, fighting the Ultimate Fighter Finals on my mom's birthday after my dad passed away, and she's sitting on the side, do you think I'm gonna lose that fight? There's no way in hell, I, there's not a single person on the planet that could have beat me on that night. Michael Chiesa finishes the job! I'm just so proud of him. And my dad said he made him promise to take care of the family. And Michael has definitely upheld that promise. He just continues to show his unconditional love for all of us. And he's really stepped up for my mom. He's got a lot of strength and he's inspiring to a lot of people, I think. He's a good boy. He's a, <laughs> he's a great son. I know Mark's here with us. I know Ma Mark sees everything. So I know he's proud of Michael. I'm proud of Michael.
There was a point in time when I questioned, why is this happening? I was upset with the world. But as time has gone on, it's given me a sense of empowerment because part of my purpose now is to help people along the way. People that feel like they have nobody to turn to. People that feel like they're kind of alone through this process, whether it's somebody that's going through the sickness or it's somebody that's on the outside, somebody that's a family member, somebody that loves somebody that's dealing with this. Like it's part of my purpose is to be there for them and to just help them keep hope, help them keep their head held high. We're not the only family that has gone through this, going through this, will go through this in the future. And I think it's important for families to know that they're not alone. It's a tireless fight and there's times when people don't have the resources or the means to where they can get the type of care that, that they need. And that's where we, the people from the outside, have to step up and we have to fight the fight alongside everybody. That is part of our job, it's just as a human being. I get a lot of solace believing that he's looking down on me somewhere above, high in the clouds, high in the sky, looking down on all of us. And I know that he'd be proud of me for doing what I can with what I got to, to help other people. Um, I know he'd be proud of me for sure. I know he's proud of you, Michael. We are all incredibly proud of you. And I remember when you and I met at Media Day for The Ultimate yeah. Fighter, because both of us um, no longer have our fathers. No. And 100% your dad is watching you, and you are living up to that legacy. I know that could not have been easy to, to talk about all of that, but thank you for it. Yeah, uh, you know, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of part of my purpose, and forgive me if I'm a little, it's the pawn in the air in Florida, I think. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's our job to honor the people that we've lost in the past from cancer, and there's currently people in the present now that are going through this fight, and they need us by their side. And for the people in the future, it's our job to raise as much money and awareness as we can to where hopefully people down the line, people's future kids, people's families, people's friends, just people in the future don't have to go through this fight at all. So it, it starts with now, it starts with today, and that's what the goal is for Jimmy V Week. We need to raise as much money as we possibly can to help other people. It's our jobs as human beings, and um, I'm glad that I'm getting my opportunity to do my part on this platform. So thank you to the ESPN family for letting me tell my story and uh, do what I can with what I got. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.